All right, Slackmaster so fans, we're going to watch Kustark and Marquis de Sade's Justine. Let's check it out. Two would be nuns. Kustark as Justine. Have you said the words, Evelyn? And her sister are at their father's regular. funeral. Your father hanged himself. Then poor Mama. Justine and her sister, Juliet. Justine, you're hopeless. We're expected to become childbearing drudges. Slaves to some rich merchant who will, meanwhile, enjoy all the pleasures nature can afford with other women. But without parents, they no longer have any funding to stay in school. The mother superior apparently has some lesbian leanings and makes advances on to Justine. And she practically gets attacked. In fact, she spends many times in this film almost getting attacked and assaulted. Ultimately, it's time to leave. No more nunnery for them. The idea is that the girls are going to become prostitutes, but they have to learn how to do it first. At which house will you be seeking instruction? Have an introduction to Madame Laurent. One of my oldest friends. This is the madam at the brothel. Seventeen, madame. Justine's younger by a year. Really? How nice. And both thirty. I call this Lessons in Whoring. Hold it now. Oh, fair me one break. No nudity here, but they're uh, learning and watching and figuring out what they got to do. There are virgins, after all. Juliet meets a man. Justine decides to return, leaves the brothel. She chose to stay in London. Justine has a funky dream. And when she wakes from that dream, the guy who she went to visit, the pastor or whatever he is, decides to have his way with her, or at least tries. She manages to avoid this guy's penis when he falls off the roof. Then she leaves, but she gets kidnapped by a group of bad guys. It's a rope for her when you finished. If she doesn't help them, she's gonna sick the boys on her. Back at the brothel, Juliet's getting whipped until dude comes to rescue her. And she's quite overwhelmed to have been rescued by him. Would you rather be a mistress in a hall? What a question. All right, then they decide to set up an ambush for somebody through the bad guys. They're using Justine. They're going to lay her out in the middle of the road. And when they do, they kill everybody except him. These guys are so bad that they even kill a child. There was a woman on board too, and after they killed her, this guy had his way with her. Yeah, that's gross. So he's the one survivor. Seemingly very little effort, the two of them manage to get out of their bindings and escape. They find a safe place after they escape, but then the bad guys follow them. A 
sword fight ensues, and he's able to kill one of them. The two of them escape again into the wilderness. She decides to bathe in the lake, and when she gets out and gets dressed, the guy attacks her. What the hell? And he has his way with her. To make matters worse, when he's done with her, he takes off running because the bad guys are coming with dogs. And they chew the hell out of Justine. After they finish her off, the way that she's been finished off this entire film, they toss her in the water. Dead. Was she dead before they assaulted her? I don't know. As for the rapist, who we thought was a good guy, well, he gets attacked and killed by the dogs too. One hell of an ending for this film. Alright, let's talk about Justine, although the title screen of this one said Cruel Passion, which was a retitle of it. I had this movie, I don't know where I got this movie, if I rented it or what, but I had this movie on, on VHS at some point, probably acquired it in um, maybe 1995 or so, 96, I don't know where I got it from. But anyway, I got it. It stars Ku Stark, and you might remember her from the movie Emily, which I reviewed on my previous channel, I haven't redone that one yet. Emily, oh, I'm sorry, Ku Stark was also in Star Wars, She, but she had her scenes cut, actually. She had some scenes on Tatooine, as um, Cammy, I think was the name. But anyway, I digress. So Justine lives with her sister Juliet in a nunnery of some sort. They're going to become nuns. Uh, the movie starts with their father. I guess he committed suicide by hanging himself, and then the mother died right after that. So they're left in this nunnery there, and um, suddenly they have no money. They're 16 and 17 years old, so um, the money runs out, and the nuns kick them out. So they don't know what to do. They decide, well, let's go to London. I think it's London, and uh, we will become prostitutes. And uh, that's their plan. So they go to the brothel. Uh, they meet the woman there, the madam, and then she kind of shows them the ropes. She's very excited that they're both virgins. Uh, that'll bring a good, nice penny. Um, but they have to learn what to do first, so she kind of shows them. Uh, they get a volunteer guy, and uh, he he does whatever he does. They watch, and they learn, and that sort of thing. And then she, Juliet meets this one guy. I don't know if he's going to pay for her or what, but um, Justine decides she can't handle this and takes off and goes back to the nunnery place. Um, but she doesn't go back to that place, actually. The father or the priest or whatever who lived nearby, she goes to him. And, of course, that night uh, the priest tries to rape her. Um, and also, when she was in the nunnery earlier, she almost got raped by the, the madam nun, who are the father, mother superior, I guess. Seems like wherever she goes, I think this movie should be entitled Almost Rape. That's what it should be called because rape doesn't actually occur until the very last scene almost. Uh, but there's almost rape all over the place in this movie. What the hell? Um... Anyway, Juliet takes up with this dude. Uh, he becomes her mistress. He, he, she is his mistress, um, so he doesn't want her to be a whore anymore. Um, so then he goes out to find Justine to bring her back, so I guess they're going to be a family. I don't know, whatever. He tracks down Justine, who by this point has been kidnapped by some bad guys who have been killing everybody in sight, using her as a, as a tool to help uh, uh, get their means. Um, and then they capture him, too. They Two of them then escape. Uh, and then they get tracked down by these bad guys again. They escape again. And then uh, out in the woods, uh, uh, the guy's like, uh, you know what? We should go see my aunt. She'll give you a place to stay. And uh, then he says, but you're in no condition to see her. You're, you're, you're too messy, dirty. So she says, well, I'll go take a bath in the lake. So she strips down and does skinny dipping a little bit, washes herself up, gets out. Meanwhile, the guy's watching her the whole time. And I guess he's getting a boner the entire time because as soon as she gets out of the water... He tries to rape her again. What the hell? This is a good guy. It's supposed to be the guy who's plorking his sister, her sister. But anyway, he actually succeeds in uh, doing her. And uh, next thing you know, as he's finishing, uh, he hears a bunch of dogs in the distance. So he's like, shit, I got to get out of here. The dogs belong to those criminals. And so he takes off. The dogs come in and they chew and uh, eat Justine practically. I, I think the dogs killed her. Uh, the mother then comes over, the, the woman who's like with the dogs, and she tells the boys, 
finish her off. So they take turns assaulting her, and then they dump her body in the water. Then the dogs chase after the rapist, who should have been quite a ways down the road by this time. But nonetheless, they catch up with him. They tear him to shreds, too. And that's how our movie ends. So, again, almost rape, violent, killing a child. This is a, a messy, exploitative movie. I love it. It's great. Tons of nudity. Uh, Justine uh, Kustark looks beautiful. Full frontal nudity on, going on in here. There's actually, I shouldn't say there's tons. There's there's plenty in there to keep you uh, occupied. But um, it's not overly uh, like some of these movies. But like I said, it's got some violence in it too. Some just, you weren't expecting it in a film like this. But it's there. So it's quite an exploitation film. So anyway, that's it. Uh, Kino's got this out. I think Redemption put this out on DVD earlier. Now Kino's got the Blu-ray. Um, it looks fantastic, right? Uh, Chris, uh, uh, no, What's his name? Chris Roger Deakins? Chris Deakins? Not Roger Deakins. Chris Deakins? I don't know. There's some sort of famous filmographer or something who's in this movie. This is his first movie, but I can't. Roger Deakins, that's it. He went on to do No Country for Old Men, Skyfall, Blade Runner, but this was his first screen credit. So there you go. And they call him a uh, cinematographer. There you go. Check it out. Justine, I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested in it. And it's a good movie if you're into this kind of exploitation shit. Can't go wrong with this one. Check it out. Leave some comments. Watch it. Bye. Justine!